I'm here talking to a living legend, the great Jose Feliciano. Jose, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, growing up. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you started on the accordion, did you not? I did. Okay. And I still play it today. Okay. The day that I learned to play guitar, my mother, I think, died a little bit because she loved the accordion. Okay. I started at the age of seven, played it till I was about 14 or so. And then at nine years old, I started learning the guitar and I fell in love with the guitar and it stole me away. Um, as soon as I heard those strings, yeah. I fell in love. It was, it was a real love situation for me. You know, and, and I'm sure you get so many questions on who influenced you, you know, as a guitarist, but I'd like to know who influenced you as a vocalist and as a songwriter. I was influenced a lot by uh, Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan, his music changed my life. The Beatles changed my life. Paul Simon, Simon and Garfunkel, yeah. they changed my life. They arranged their own songs, so to speak, on the spot. And I love that because I've always felt that spontaneity is the key to most anything. I'd like to talk about the World Series, 1968. You played a version of the National Anthem, and you were really the first person to stylize it. Tell me a little bit about that. In 1968, I had the world by the tail. I, I had light my fire on the charts, and I was climbing the charts with another one, which was high-heeled sneakers. And I was invited to Detroit by the Tiger announcer, Ernie Harwell. I decided in my mind a long time ago before that that if I ever was asked to do the national anthem, I was gonna do it different. I don't feel the anthem had the respect that it deserved, so I decided to do a soulful rendition of it. It caused quite a bit of controversy. Sure. Uh, I didn't expect the controversy because I did nothing wrong with it. It was a, I sang it in a soulful gospel field, you know? Yeah, from the heart. Exactly. I would say to you yes. that the best thing that ever happened for me uh, out of the national anthem yes. was that I met my wife. Oh, that's beautiful. I'd like to talk a little about Chico and the Man, mm -hmm. um, you know, because we were talking at the studio and sometimes we play trivia games and talking about the best TV theme songs of all time. And I actually threw in Chico, don't ask, Chico don't and the Man. Don't ask me <laughs> what the best TV theme was. Uh, no, uh, I, think, I think it was an innovation because, you know, most of your themes were like either instrumental or useless jargon, you know. Uh, right. Right. I, I mean, you know, you, you did have some, like the theme for Bonanza was a good thing, but mainly uh, the themes were kind of like, they didn't have much musicality. You know, like Bewitched, for example, da 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 You know, right. catchy, but yeah. not very musical. Right. And I was asked to write the, the theme for Chico and the Man, so I went into the studio and I, um, and I wrote it really there you know it's funny but it only took me a, a couple of minutes to write it wow and uh, i played it for james Comack and he loved it Did, did you like acting? I love I loved acting, and I still love it. If I got a part today, yeah, I would I would love to act. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh hey, universe, it's really nice being with you, my friend. Thank you so much. It's, really? it's an honor and a privilege to be able to talk to you. Thank you.